were not used very well, but he felt they're not going to support uh, Yi Sigman. And also he was convinced, Stalin was by Kim Il-sung, that the South would rise up and, and welcome the invasion from the North, uh, another uh, miscalculation. Let me say something about the Dean Acheson Press Club speech, which has received a great deal of attention from historians. Historians have seen Truman's decision in June of 1950 as a reversal of Secretary of State Dean Acheson's perimeter speech, in which Acheson said that Taiwan and, and uh, the Republic of Korea were outside of the American defense perimeter. What Acheson actually said was that the United States would consider an attack on Japan or the Philippines as an attack on the United States. Those were within our perimeter. Outside of that perimeter, which would include the Republic of Korea, that was an issue for the United Nations uh, and allies, and that we would be willing to support uh, United Nations, which is in fact uh, what we did. So, and, and there's no evidence, quite frankly, uh, in any of the Soviet documents now available to us that indicates that Stalin was uh, that it was influenced at all by the Atchison speech. I'm sure he knew about it, but it's to his, in his interpretation, it merely confirmed the United States' unwillingness to get involved in a land war in Asia. Uh, Stalin, on the other hand, was very willing to get involved in a land war in Asia using his proxies uh, in the North Korean uh, regime. Um, in fact, it should be noted, too, that in 1949, uh, when MacArthur was giving his assessment to the government, of, uh, to the administration of Truman, of uh, the situation in East Asia, he, too, re he recommended that South Korea not be included in the American defense perimeter. Uh, so, in a sense, Atchison's speech was really in line with what MacArthur had recommended uh, a year earlier. Following his decision to send American troops to Korea, the next critical decision uh, by Truman uh, concerned the approval of sending U.S. and U.N. troops uh, beyond the 38th parallel following MacArthur's successful landing at Incheon. And let me move to a couple of documents that I brought here. This kind of shows the, the pattern of the war in the first months, uh, the North Korean invasion and the Red pushing the uh, Republic of Korea, U.S. and U.N. forces down the Busan perimeter. Then later, the, in September 15th, the landing at Incheon, which then began to push the North Koreans back up uh, beyond the, the 38th parallel, which was at that point the, the demilitarized zone. Next uh, is uh, this document. And uh, for those of you in the back, I'll I'll read some of the important parts to you. This is uh, a Joint Chiefs of Staff memo, and it's uh, uh, the date is the uh, it's June, actually it's June 29th, uh, 1950, and it's to uh, General MacArthur, and it's a top secret document that was not classified until 1975. And the first thing it says is these are your new instructions, and then uh, number two in support of resolutions of the United Nations approved on June 25th, so forth, you are to A, employ naval and air forces available to the Far East Command to provide the fullest possible support to South Korean forces by attack on military targets so as to permit these forces to clear South Korea of North Korean forces. Employment of Army forces will be limited to essential communications and other service units and C, naval and air actions, uh, by naval and air actions, you will defend Formosa against invasion or attack by the Chinese communists. This is another clear reversal of United States uh, policy um, and, and basically expanding the defense perimeter now to include the nationalists on Taiwan. And then item number three is the Seventh Fleet is assigned to your operational control. Um, the 38th parallel uh, had proven to be an indefensible border between the two Koreas since 1945, 
and intelligence reports indicated uh, little likelihood that China or the Soviet Union would intervene militarily. This would be in September and October of 1950 after the Incheon invasion. Uh, and there had been UN General Assembly resolutions in 1947 and also in 48 and uh, 49, all calling for, quote, the complete independence and unity of Korea. So in, in a sense, the uh, uh, Truman could claim, I guess, that, that uh, allowing the UN uh, forces under MacArthur's command to go north of the 38th parallel was in keeping with earlier UN resolutions. Uh, the outcome of a united Korea was particularly appealing to Truman for domestic political reasons, as it would stifle Republican criticism that his administration was soft on communism. This certainly had come up uh, in 1949 with the fall of China. Um, uh, in fact, had Truman not authorized MacArthur to send UN forces north of the 38th parallel, he probably would have been denounced by his Republican opponents, especially the China lobby and individuals like Senator Joseph McCarthy uh, and, and other uh, supporters of McCarthy uh, for his uh, weak foreign policy. Keep in mind, 1950 was a congressional election year, and Truman had to keep that in mind. Um, the, uh, June the June decision also to enter the Korean War probably had some uh, political basis. I mean, it certainly had to be in the back of Truman's mind. Uh, despite the international implications, the reason I gave earlier, I mean, Truman was not unaware of the fact that he was being uh, attacked domestically at home for being weak on communism. But he did uh, uh, proceed to defend South Korea only with UN support. Now, the Security Council resolution came about only because the Soviet Union was boycotting the uh, Security Council because the United States and others had recognized Communist China or People's Republic of China as a legitimate representative of China on the Security Council. Interestingly, Truman, uh, in terms of politics, never went to Congress to get any authorization for this military action. There was no declaration of war. And in a lot of ways, this was a, a, a change from uh, American policy, certainly from the Second World War, which where we were attacked directly, and, and Roosevelt went for a declaration of war. Uh, George Elsie, again, the young White House aide who I've got to know uh, and has recently written his, his memoirs, believes that Truman was not well served by his uh, staff, uh, including his, uh, his secretaries of defense and state that uh, they should have insisted that he go to Congress in the early months of the war to get a congressional resolution. Uh, Truman, in a press conference, was asked about whether he would get congressional support. He said it wasn't necessary. The United States was involved in a police action under the UN uh, sponsorship. And so a, a declaration of war or a congressional resolution was not necessary. This proved to be a tremendous political problem for Truman after the Chinese entered the war and the war began to go badly, then it became Mr. Truman's war. No president since has sent American soldiers in any number, in any significant numbers, into a foreign conflict without getting some kind of congressional involvement. Uh, this was the case with the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, of course, uh, during the Johnson administration and both Bush administrations in wars against Iraq uh, got congressional approval. And probably in, in the summer, certainly in, in September of 1950, Truman would not have had a problem getting congressional support. Uh, historian Arthur Schlesinger Jr. once observed that all American wars are, are popular for the first three months. And uh, that was to some extent the case of the Korean War as well. Um, let me uh, do another uh, slide here. Um, Truman had been convinced by Douglas MacArthur that uh, an advance of American troops and UN and, and, and South Korean troops beyond the 38th parallel 
would not lead to intervention by the Chinese. The Chinese had warned against such an action, uh, but uh, when MacArthur, when, when Truman met with General Lawrence MacArthur on Wake Island in the Pacific in late October of 1950, MacArthur assured him that the Chinese were merely bluffing, that the reports that had been given to Truman via diplomats, particularly from India, which was a neutral country then, that uh, the Chinese were, were preparing to attack. MacArthur dismissed them. He said his intelligence showed no indication that the Chinese were building up uh, any kind of force that could invade. And if they did, uh, they would be easily destroyed uh, by, um, by his uh, uh, air power and superior uh, artillery. Well, we now know that even as MacArthur was telling Truman this on Wake Island, the Chinese were already uh, intervening in, in great numbers, crossing the Yalu River uh, in, in small groups, traveling at night, and uh, camping out in the, in the mountains. Uh, and in, in late November of 1950, they attacked UN and, and uh, ROK forces in great numbers and pushed MacArthur and uh, the UN forces back out of Pyongyang, which had been liberated in, in uh, uh, October of 1950, and pushed them back south of the 38th parallel, even south of Seoul. Seoul was lost again, and it wasn't until uh, early 1951 that UN forces under the command of General Matthew Ridgway began to push the North Koreans back to the north. This is uh, uh, the official notification from General George C. Marshall, who at that time was uh, serving as Secretary of Defense. He'd been brought back into government during the Korean War. On September 29, 1950, it's from the uh, uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, uh, well, to General August MacArthur, and uh, authorizing him to uh, proceed with the 8th Army uh, north of 38th parallel, and, and after it says, we want you to feel unhampered tactically and strategically to proceed north of 38th parallel. Announcement above referred to may precipitate embarrassment in the UN, where evident desire is not to be confronted with necessity of a vote on passage of 38th parallel. By this time, the Soviet Union was back in the Security Council, and they knew the resolution authorizing UN forces north of 38th parallel would not pass. So what they say, rather, but rather to find who have found it military, militarily necessary to do so. So kind of a stealthy operation here. That you, you are to go north to 38th parallel, but we're not going to go and look for a UN resolution on that. It's a, you must make it clear that it's a military necessity uh, to go north, uh, which MacArthur did. The uh, UN troops liberated uh, uh, Pyongyang, began moving up to the Yalu River when the Chinese intervened in uh, November and created a, a disaster uh, for, the, uh, for the UN command. Truman's decision to, dis uh, to dismiss uh, MacArthur from his commands in April of 1951 was in the minds of the American public the president's most controversial act during the Korean War. Uh, Truman regarded MacArthur's actions as rank insubordination in defiance of his commander-in-chief. From Truman's diary entries dating back as far as 1945, we know that Truman held General MacArthur in low regard, and Truman had completely lost faith in MacArthur's military judgment following the Chinese intervention in Korea in November. Nevertheless, 